Now let's talk about designing a corpus for term mining. And there are some issues uh, that you'd have to consider. Um, first, think about the purpose uh, of your corpus and of your entire term mining project. So what is the target application? Um, are you building uh, a large a term base or is it a small scale project? Uh, what is the envisaged end result? Who will use it? So are you building a corpus just for yourself or will several people use it and so on? Um, then preferably you should try to delimit your domain and here um, I suppose many people who have dealt with this topic before will agree that most domains are interdisciplinary. Um, even um, in, on the abstract level, when you start thinking about a domain, uh, it will almost certainly neighbor uh, onto several other domains. So, for example, I want to build a carstology corpus, but when I start looking at texts, I will nearly always find that there are texts that also contain terms from hydrology, geology, geography, physics, all depending on the context and the specific topic of the text. So um, it's best to decide beforehand not to be bothered too much by interdisciplinarity and on the other hand exclude the texts which um, would tend to disrupt your um, term mining project. Next, of course, is the issue of languages, how many languages you want to include. This is related to the purpose and also to the text av availability. Um, and then uh, as to the type of corpus, if you're, you'll only include one language, then things are consider considerably simpler. So your corpus will very likely be uh, monolingual, uh, consisting of written texts, um, and uh, then you don't have to deal with issues such as uh, alignment. Whereas if you're aiming for a multilingual corpus, then you should also think about whether there are parallel texts available, and if not, how will you ensure uh, comparability? Um, the next issue uh, relates to the text that you're going to choose. So, um, as we discussed earlier, uh, you should um, think about the population. So, uh, what are the texts pertaining to your domain of choice, uh, which genres exist and which uh, you would like to include. In some domains, uh, this uh, landscape can be highly varied. For example, in medicine, you will find uh, very different text types uh, with different levels of special specialization and also with um, quite distinct term usage. So um, it's important to decide first um, so uh, which genres are important for you and which might best be suited for terminology mining. Um, the next obvious thing is the scope. So um, what is uh, the target size of your corpus? How many texts you want to include? Um, if uh, you would like to have a certain extent of representativeness and variety, but on the other hand, perhaps um, you have uh, just a handful of very long texts and then a number of smaller texts, you should consider perhaps shortening some of the long texts uh, and not including them in their entirety. Um, so this is obviously related to the text sources that you might have at your disposal. Um, perhaps uh, you already have texts uh, in electronic format uh, that you would like to process, that you would like to use for term mining, or in other cases you might want to use uh, texts from the internet, in which case it is advisable to use um, a bootcat application, so a web crawler uh, um, incorporated in a corpus workbench, which will uh, search for texts uh, according to, your, to the seed words that you provide and will then compile a corpus out of those 
internet text. Of course, both scenarios can easily be combined. So to have some text from the internet and others from other text sources. If your texts don't exist in electronic format, then by all means, uh, think about the time effort that uh, needed for conversion and uh, digitization. Uh, then, of course, it's a, a good idea to think about balance. Uh, if you are modeling a small domain where um, not many authors are uh, active or um, man, not many authors produce texts, then um, you should think about, uh, if possible, including all of them or most of them because uh, you don't want to have uh, the terminology used by just a single author, for example. Um, another question for multilingual corpora is, do you want your uh, languages, so the subcorpora for each language, to be of equal sizes? Um, sometimes uh, uh, this is simply not possible to achieve. So um, all of these things are worth uh, considering beforehand. Actually, when you're compiling a corpus, I like to think of um, something John Sinclair said uh, years ago. John Sinclair, one of the fathers of corpus linguistics, and his advice was, um, when you're designing a corpus, it's good to avoid perfectionism. So uh, it's nice to think about the text that you would like to include and everything you'd like to have and so on, but your plan will almost never turn out the way you had planned it. So it's good to just um, collect some texts and then adjust as you go along and uh, not to be too uh, idealistic in the first place.